Aloha, and how you doing? Gordo the Texar here, and welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Hibachi Talk. Got my good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy in the house. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Nice to see you, Andrew. Good and to be back. Good to have you here. You're not here much, but you're here. I'm here. Yeah, mentally. Eh, so so. I and something it, was missing. Yeah, something is missing. And speaking of, of something hey, missing, he found me out already. <laughs> guy just got here. Yeah. Good job. We have a good old buddy Chuck Larson here. Hey, and, is that background picture the one that people see? Yes, what they're they seeing. See that island there? Yeah. That's my island. I know. I know. You've been fined on that island many a time. That's why I picked it. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I like home sweet home. <laughs> see, I, got, I knew I'd lose control with this guy. Anyway, Chuck Larson is the founder and chief executive officer of Seagull Schools, um, which has been around for some time. And we're going to talk about early education and intergenerational care. So early and generational care. Intergenerational care. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so I love it. So and Chuck is a, um, a world recognized leader in this. So okay. We scoop right hey, in I here. go to China and I stand out. Yes, right. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got to lose control of this thing already. Okay, but first we always ask our guests. So, where did you go to school? Like, what did you study? And where did you go? Where did you come from, Chuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it was a virgin birth, actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's These always start interestingly. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, uh, well, I, first of all, I came to Hawaii uh, on a one year what I thought was a paid vacation to be a public school teacher. Okay. They hired me over the phone. They were okay. so desperate in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had my vision of what Hawaii was going to look like. I thought, give me a bicycle, and that's all I'll need, and ride around the island. And this was on Kauai. Okay. And uh, uh, prior to that, I had gone to college to be a, um, well, a teacher. And, uh, but I wanted to work with young children, which was unusual for a man. Mm -hmm. And at the, in those days, I didn't even know there was anything younger than a kindergarten teacher. So I was being trained to be a kindergarten teacher. And the college had never had a man major in primary education, and they didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Where, would you, where would you go, where'd you go to school? Me. Where, where, uh, where'd you go to school? Pacific Lutheran in Tacoma. In Tacoma, okay, in Washington, okay. Then I came here and taught school for one year, like I said, on Kauai, and then I went back to graduate school uh, at Western Washington, uh, and I missed Hawaii so much that I finished graduate school in nine months. And I, was on, I was on a boat back to Hawaii the day I finished. Wow, and, wow. Uh, you know, and so what year was that? When did you, when did you come back to Hawaii? Uh, for 1967 was my first time here, and then I came back in 1969. Okay, I graduated from high school in 67, so you are older than me. You're making that up. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> wow, you were, guys were talking about pirates earlier, so I didn't know how far back we were going to yeah, go. Okay. Wow. Oh, well, thanks for making me feel so good. So you're welcome. But back. you took a boat when you came back. I did. I, I, okay. Yeah, That's I like, took a boat. There were no such as airplanes back in those days. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a pirate boat. <laughs> you were a stowaway? I. <laughs> I, I uh, so you, you come to Hawaii, but you come to Hawaii, and then what's your plan? You're going to do what? Start a school, or what are you going to do? Um, no, I I came here as a tourist, basically, just to you know. The, I well before that, I'd had adolescent fantasies of Polynesia almost my whole life. Okay, you know, brown skinned women, white beaches, palm trees, and and I've I've had all that. Okay, so you you come here and then in the sixties, and but you have to make a living. So not what do you really. do? <laughs> <laughs> really we got a couple quiet. thousand now so that are making a living. They're doing yeah. just fine. So, 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 how, what, what made okay, you create right. Seagull School? Well, when I came back from uh, graduate school, okay. uh, back to Hawaii, uh, I had a job at the de Department of Education, but they'd overhired and they didn't have a place for me. No. So, being a little bit restless, I started looking at the paper and, and I saw an ad for um, a job at Kuhio Park Terrace. You can believe that, okay? okay yeah. And uh, they hired me to be what they call a toddler program coordinator for a federally funded project. Okay. It's called PACT now. Okay. And uh, boy, I didn't know what I was doing. I never worked with kids younger than kindergarten before, but I'd, I'd had a child, so I thought I knew something. And they hired me because I was a male and that I might have some influence on the locals living at KPT. And, yeah. and uh, I tell you, they taught me way more than I uh, <laughs> taught them. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a good experience. Interesting. So, okay, go ahead. And, and, and then I kept going. I kind of jumped from one place to another, learning about early education. Okay. And even went to Kauai, and I was training Head Start teachers. 
Okay. Oh, wow. uh, and then a friend of mine who was living in Kailua told me that she had a job that was going to come up because she was going to quit it. There was a small child care center in Kailua, right next to the YMCA. I think it's the YMCA, yeah. One of the Poly Highway. And um, so I came over and took the job. I remember in the interview, uh, they offered me uh, um, a salary. And I said, well, okay. Uh, I don't think you get anything better than me. And they said, well, uh, you're right, we can't get anything better than you. <laughs> so that, that salary is what they meant. Yeah, yeah uh, that salary, right. Yeah, you so, get what you pay for. And so um, I, I worked there for about uh, five or six months, and then they went out of business. Oh, great. And uh, so I collected unemployment. Uh, what a good deal unemployment is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, traveled around the islands. And while I was doing that, I was reading this book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. OK. You know, a funky little book, and I thought, kind of an airy fairy kind of thing, hippie yeah. days. Yep, yep. And um, so th my landlady, uh, I said, hey, after that school went out of business, she said, hey, why don't you start that school up again, and, I, and I'll help you get some federal funding. And uh, she said, pick a name. So, Seagull School. Jonathan, yeah, it came from the Jonathan book, Jonathan honestly. It came from the That's so good. That that is cool. Cool. put a lot of thought into it. That's all I'm, I'm just going like to point the, that out. I like the alliteration of the name. <laughs> you know? and I thought it was another job between unemployment checks. Yeah. Really. Well, I've had the same job now for 46 years. So that's that? 46 years Seagull School, which is now Seagull Schools, right. has been in existence. And you founded this with a small... And how large or small was the school when you first started? 38 it? kids. 38 kids wow. in Kailua or Waimanawa? Kailua, yeah. My office is still in that same spot. So, um, but the thing about Seagull Schools is that it's, it's been a great vehicle for trying lots of new things. Like, well, mm. I'm, I'm sure we failed as many things as, we, as we've succeeded yeah. at. Um, some of our early projects were, we were the first ones in the state to be licensed to do group infant child care. Group wow. infant child care. What's yeah. that? Well, it used to the be diapers. A, you know, in, a, in a center, center-based okay. center right. infant care. And uh, we did that as a demonstration project. We had a generous grant from Harold Castle Foundation to provide free infant care for teens living in Waimanalo, because I lived in Waimanalo. Okay. Uh, so they could go back to high school and we would watch their children. Huh. And we got a big write-up in the newspapers, front page, and um, nobody would come. All the, all the people in Waimanalo, Waimanalo thought, hey, if I go to that, that means I'm a bad parent. Oh, because really? The, because also, the, the cultural aspect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody does it in, in their families, you know. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we had that big article in the Star Bulletin, all the people from Hawaii Kai started coming. Oh, oh. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they came they came from Wyoming to Wyoming. Oh, yeah, to talk about their yeah. kids. Yeah, we charged them though. It's oh yeah, okay, good. Okay. Yeah, they they want the free ninety nine stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that was an interesting, interesting project we did. Another one we had was we started the state's first uh, child care referral. Um, okay. Now what's that? Well, it's done by Patch now. Oh, okay. Preschool attendant for children. Yeah. It more it they started up after we we stopped it, but. Um, we had a grant to do this. A lot of the stuff we get grants to, you know, whenever we're being um, improvising things. And so we had a grant to do that, and we ran the first uh, child care referral agency for quite a while. Another one we did was um, we had a traveling preschool in Waimanalo. Okay. We got a really beautiful van donated by some uh, Chevy dealer, and, and we had a grant from Harold Castle Foundation. And we took this van around to different neighborhoods in okay. Wyoming, all different neighborhoods. What, during the day? Like yeah, during the daytime, different neighborhood. And we set up this preschool in a park. Wow. Come to it. And I remember thinking, this is a good idea. It's working. So at that time, I was involved with the Polynesian Voyaging Society. I, I sailed with the Hokulea for about nine years. And so I asked Pinky Thompson, I said, hey, Pinky, don't you think this is a good idea? Maybe you'd like to fund it? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Pinky sent some guys out, you know, and they looked at it. Next thing you know, Kamehameha Schools was doing it. They had traveling preschool. Oh, yeah. they copied ah. you. Yeah, they copied what a, Yeah. Oh, well, that's and, not fair. And did the group infant care get copied? Because I remember doing security for one of the uh, child care facilities up at Schofield. And they had, their rooms were like that. All the infant care was in groups like that. And this was what it would have been in like 98. 
So did that? Did that? Did that? Because you guys were first. Did that stick around, or did that become well, the way? No, it is. It's normal. Did that become license the way now. to do it's it? It's a yeah. regular thing. Department of okay, Human Services interesting. monitors the license Ooh. now. Wow, that's real stringent. The, the uh, yeah, yeah, the guidelines. You number number of people per it's, per uh, infant and all that stuff, right? Yeah, it's not just babysitting. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You're a, a, an accredited early education facility facilities. I mean, you know, uh, you've got what almost 200 staff. Yes, yes. Wow. And we got uh, like just about a thousand kids. And about a thousand, really? thousand kids that you have. All K to twelve or what? No, no. these are at Preschool. eighteen months till oh. they go to kindergarten. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, but we got people older than that even. Uh, yeah. When Gordon was on the board, I remember one time we were having a board. <laughs> what do you win? Am I no longer on the board? <laughs> 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 did did well, by well, the well, way, well, did something well, happen? There was going to be an announcement today. Oh, now you tell me. I'm just the messenger. Don't hurt me. Okay, no, I mean, we were sitting around uh, a table, our board, having a regular board meeting, and I remember we just built the first phase of our Coppola school. That was and intimately we're, we're involved thinking about, uh, you know, about doing an infant care center, and we're thinking, why well, infant care? That's not a good business, you know, it's just so expensive. So one of our board members, Karen Keto Moscatello, Karen says, well, what about, what about adult care? And boy, the light went on with everybody, and, and uh, so we, so we committed the space in our architectural design to doing that, and then I went to uh, the mainland and looked at 22 what they call shared site facilities. But none of them were actually architecturally designed uh, for mm. older adults and young children together. And so what we were doing was it was pretty groundbreaking. Breaking. Uh, I had one experience at a, a geriatric hospital in West Seattle and the guy who was putting the intergenerational program together for that was doing it for the benefit of the older adults. Right. It was 800 bed hospital. Oh. And he was designing uh, an infant care program on the ground floor where all the older adults would be, would be passing by. Mm -hmm. and, he was, and one of the things he taught me was that just visual contact is a valuable experience. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to be touching each other and, and you know, in close proximity. And so we, we, if you come out and see our facility out at Coppola, you'll see how we designed it so that there's visual um, pathways between the older adults, the kupuna, and the young children, the, the keiki. And this project has worked so well that people have copied us. Yep. You know. How long has that been around now, you think about it? How long is the... About 24 years. 24, 25 years. What a yeah. great idea, though. Yeah. yeah. And, um, makes total sense. It, it does make sense. Sure. You, you don't have to... T you don't have to talk people into it. Yeah. Everybody says, oh, yeah. Because yeah, everybody loves babies. And, they get, well, and, and everybody wants a kapuna, right? Everybody wants yeah, well, another grandpa, right? Another grandma. Hey, hey, you know, when I go to Rotary Club or something, I got some really good stories. Oh, I bet. But can I just tell you a quick one? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, before we have a break, go for it. Okay. Um, well, I'm going out to our, our Kapolei school, and, and daily all the uh, kapuna get pushed out, if they want to, in their walkers or wheelchairs. And they walk around this this uh, walkway connects all the classrooms together and the children are on the playground in the middle of all this activity and they uh, talk to the kapuna and it's just this dialogue going on on a daily basis and so this one guy's getting pushed out in his, his wheelchair by an aide his name is Joe Filler okay and uh, he's got a little stuffed animal on his lap I said Joe what are you gonna do with that stuffed animal he says oh I'm going to give it to my girlfriend Kayla <laughs> <laughs> so the aide says, yeah, yeah, he and Kayla have this, this relationship. I said, okay, that's great. Same day, okay, I'm working as my usual job, the maintenance man, you know, fixing the irrigation system. And I got this nice looking uh, volunteer, he's a young Japanese guy from the East Coast. He works for the, um, the Navy in an atomic submarine. He's assigned out here. And I said, what are you doing out here? You know, volunteering. He says, oh, my daughter Kayla goes to school here. <laughs> uh, Can you believe a coincidence like that's that? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, welcome, so I, welcome, welcome to Hawaii, right? That one degree of separation. So I said, well, do you know about the relationship between your daughter and Joe Filler? He says, I certainly do. You know, we're from the East Coast. We have no family here. And Joe gave her that stuffed animal about three months ago, and she sleeps with it every single night. Wow. wow. Whoa. Chicken yeah, skin. Yeah, I still get that one. Yeah, yeah. still okay. chicken skin. Okay, so I'm always looking for free publicity. I think this is a great story. Yeah. And uh, so I call my friend. Uh, he writes for the Star Advertiser. He used to run. Um, 
I forget, I'll think of his name in a minute, but he used to like to ride about airplanes. Well, Joe Filler was a retired airline pilot. Okay, can we got a pause? Okay. Okay, we'll continue, cause we'll, we'll call a poignant pause. Okay. All right, so we're going to we're gonna take a break and pay some bills. I have a picture of Chuck, um, the basketball player, that we might, oh. we, might, we might show at some point in time. We'll show it when we first, when we come back, and Andrew will do his security minute. We'll go find Angus. Anyway, we're going to take a break. We're right here with Chuck Larson, the founder of Siegel Schools, and we'll be back in a minute. Aloha, my name is Carl Campagna and I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers and Reformers. I invite you to come watch our show on thinktechhawaii.com. You can also see our shows on YouTube as well. You can Google search those. I appreciate the time. I hope that you do join us as we learn about education, about the educational system here in Hawaii, what the challenges are, what the benefits are, and how much our kids are learning. So thank you, I hope you join us. Aloha Kako, I'm Marcia Joyner and I'm inviting you to navigate the journey. We are discussing the end of life options and we would really love to have you every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. right here. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Hey, Andrew Security Guy here, and I got a quick update for you on a problem we identified last year. You might recall that a lot of serious vulnerabilities were found in a lot of D-Link products, including routers, cameras, access points, uh, specifically this D1510 um, uh, line. Um, researchers found um, that this, this is actually an enterprise recommended switch, and they found that it had insecure authentication design, and it got reported to D-Link last January. Uh, the FTC, if you saw, filed a lawsuit against them because they had uh, really made some de deceptive claims about the security of the product. Um, anyway, um, uh, what researchers uh, demonstrated was that an un unauthenticated attacker could get information out of the device, including the username and password, and then basically take over administrative control of the device. And, of course, once they own that, they own your network. Um, on February 21st, a couple of days ago, D-Link finally released a firmware update for that device. So if you've got any of these D-Link devices, make sure you take a look. Go to D-Link's website and check this stuff. Um, Currently, the firmware release that they put out is just a beta firmware release, um, but it, is, it, it looks like it's sound. Um, as soon as it's been tested a little more, they'll release a final version of it. But if you're running this equipment, definitely go out and get this update. Uh, if you haven't removed this equipment, if you did remove it, you can probably update the firmware and put it back in service. Um, so there you go. Take care of your gear. Take care of your firmware. Uh, we found Angus out on the beach, as always. He's never here when we start, but he always manages his way in. Angus, what's going on, buddy? Good How you doing, Andrew? All right, man. Hey, Aloha. Good hey, Chucky. Talk like a pirate. <laughs> Arr. You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> Arr. 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 There you go. Arr. You know, he talks like a pirate. He's talking like a pirate day. Sounds Arr. like it. He does it. He does it. All the, all the way to school and everything. Well, those wee barons. You know, we call children in Scotland barons. Ah. The Scottish word of the day. Right on. Anyway, you know, I was giving up gadgets for a while and looking at other things. And I call it, you know, are you kidding me? So I took a couple of pictures I saw the other day there. Check this out. Come on, people. You can't put your shopping carts away. <laughs> look, at, look at how much work it took to pile those shopping carts up on the lawn. <laughs> I know you're really working hard and you're really tired and everything, but it's only like 100 feet to put the shopping cart away. How rude is that? It's rude. really rude. How rude is it that? It is really, really rude. So come on. Get your sweet little tiny, well, maybe not so tiny, Ocoli's up off the chair and move the cart back to where you got it. Anyway, that's my, are you kidding me for the week? And as we say at the end of every Angus segment, let your wing gang free well, where you be. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Angus trying to keep you honest out there. You know you can put that card away and you just don't. So do it. Help everybody else out, man. Be a good neighbor. All right, yeah, Chuck. Sure. Welcome back, brother. So we're talking about hey, but your put buddy. The, putting the card away, though. Yeah. 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 The principles of live aloha. Yes. Uh, what was it? Robbie Alm could pretty much compose that. That's one of the principles of live alone. Oh, yeah. Put the card away. Put your card, card away. away. Jeez. How hard is it? it uh, the hard, hard is it. And I, I watch these people struggling to get it up on that. On, oh, they it, fight to it put it on the curb? It was harder to get it on the curb than it was to take it 
not even 50 uh, feet. Hey, I know this pisses you off too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when somebody leaves it in the frickin' parking spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's up with that? I mean, you like to ram it, but it's your car. I know. It's, yeah. Oh, it just irritates it. Okay, we're di we dig Once again, we digress. No, that was part of a segment. Okay. That was good. He 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 picked that right up. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, what he was did. it? The Live Aloha. Live Aloha. Yeah. Part of the policy, man. Put your freaking cart away. Yeah. Oh man, I, uh, Angus pushed a button there, didn't he? Well, wow. I mean, everybody hates that, but and, people and do it. It's, it's like a what? sensitive issue. I'm glad we brought it up. Uh, man. Oh, so all right. right. Let's get out here and go get some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to <laughs> Flipper. No, what was his name? Uh, Joe Filler. Filler. Yeah, yeah. So Joe Filler, I'm, I'm thinking about, um, you know, it gets some free publicity out of this story. And the guy uh, puts <laughs> the, the, uh, the story in the newspaper. And, right. Uh, and uh, um, still trying to think of his name. but um, Not so Jim Dooley, because he's an investigative mm, reporter. Uh, <laughs> uh, it'll come to me. But the, so the response is, about three weeks later, I get a call from these people in the mainland. They want to know, what is Seagull Schools? You guys teach sailing or hang gliding? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Guy, yeah. Um, but what happens, he's been, he was Googling his, the name Joe Filler, because that was his dad's name. He'd been looking for his dad for 30 years. Oh, come on. Really? That's what he said. Oh, his mom come on. He split up, and, and when he Googled it, it popped up because it was on the newspaper. And this was his son, Joe Filler's son. This is wow. amazing. So I was looking for more free publicity. I, I ran. You wrote that story, too? <laughs> I arranged a, re a reunion. Sure. Put it on TV. Sure. Okay, so um, but then this, this, it turns out, you know, that, um, you know, they they also had a daughter, and she came with the, the son, and the daughter moved here to stay near her father. Yeah. And um, it was just a, you know, a tear wow. reunion. Wow, wow, It wow. started with so, so, spotting that toy in, in so, his lap, in so the, yeah. the, the, the gentleman's never lap. Know. So, if I can, so, so if I can play off this a little bit, you know, there's, there's a rela the, the, that degrees of separation. Have you had any famous students, like any students that have come through the program well, that, got, that, you could, that you could name? Okay, well, we had this kid who was uh, three years old. He was at our downtown school. Yeah. And, I, you know, we always, I go out there and play, throw ball around, stuff like that with him. And uh, so this one little guy was throwing this Nerf football, and he was catching it pretty good and throwing it back. And we did it for a while. You know, 18 years later, I, I see his picture on the paper. It's Marcus Mariota. Oh, wow. He came wow. through Seagull. Yeah, he came right through Seagull. You know, who knows? That could have been the you know, thing that changed his to life. Change his you life. might have fixed his, his uh, throwing arm there. You uh, never know. Okay. You guys know who Aki Bono is? Yeah. Sure. Well, yes. At our Wyman Hall School, he was king of the sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Actually, he's a very gentle kid. He's yeah, very but he's rather, rather hefty. He was, he was a large, large kid, yeah. <laughs> wow. So you had Oshimoto, king of the you had sandbox. Marcus Mariota. That's pretty cool. Uh, hey, do you know who Dan Foley is? I do. Yesterday, I'm at the Y working out. Kay. This guy says, are you Chuck Larson? I said, yeah. He says, I'm Dan Foley. <laughs> I haven't seen Dan for a long time, but he had two kids in our school right. a long time. And for me, that's one of the most fun things, just running into people you never, you well, know. Well, at your age, you're running into adults. Well, after that 40 there. years, yeah, like you've had a couple of generations oh, yeah, come yeah, through yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, two, I had two grandchildren that went through the program, oh, so, okay. and so and they're in their 20s now. So, wow. I mean, they're in Seattle. I think you have, uh, you know, in their 20s and so on. I got a great picture of you that's really kind of the coolest shot I've seen to you in a long time. And then I'm going to ask you when we see this. Chuck Larson. Nice. Right How is that? The basketball player? How is this? In doing early education, intergenerational care, I'm going to ask you this question. How old are you? Well, when people ask me how old I am, I say I'm 95. Okay. Okay, because I, I, I look so good for 95. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like somebody asked me that just two days ago. I'm riding my bike in Waimanalo, and somebody says, Chuck, how old are you? And I said, 95. 95. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So what? No, what's I'm 74. What's 74, the, wow. What's the big, I mean, these are some major accomplishments and major trends that you started in education, and, uh, you know, for this group. So what, what's, what's the highlight for you? I mean, gosh, you seem to have a lot, but can you pick one and talk about it? Uh, first time I saw my wife, she was applying for a job. Ah, ah pull the, that really pull the gym out. out of that, out of that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right on. That one stands out. Good uh, answer. Yeah, <laughs> she's watching, of course. Yeah, she'll, she'll watch it. She'll know for sure. Yeah, yeah. Good answer on that. And one. all you relatives of hers too, tell her. <laughs> yeah, I think your wife and my wife used to go to the same church together at some point in time. I think. Oh, out in uh, White Paw or, or something? somewhere, um, Wahiwa or White And they both got the same name. They both called Cindy. 
That's right. Cynthia. My, well, my Cin I got Cindy. Yeah, so so uh, famous graduates. Now, tell us something about this Blue Zones project, because you're also involved with <laughs> in Blue Zones and, and how that ties in with what's happening at Seagull Schools. Sure. Um, Blue Zone is a concept that was started by this guy who worked for uh, National Geographic magazine. He traveled all around the world, and he noticed that there were places in the world where people lived to be a longer age, and, and they were healthy. You know, we've all know the Okinawa is an example of that. Some islands in the Mediterranean, uh, Loma Linda, California. Aren't you going to ask me about Loma Linda, California? That's where the monkey heart happen. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> no, the vegetarians. Oh, they're vegetarians. Yeah, I think no, the monkey, first monkey heart transplant was in Loma Linda. Oh. Monkey to monkey or what no, are you talking about? Human. What are you talking about? Not, no, I didn't talk about it. Hey, go ahead. I interrupt. <laughs> you, were, you, were the, you were the guy. You were the recipient. Of what you're <laughs> that's you, no, that's why you can't find any monkeys in Loma Linda. <laughs> they all left. Oh, oh Lord. God. Oh, God. Oh, God. How, how, how do you get on this blue zone with that, man? All right. Okay. All right. Blue okay. right. 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 zone project. Blue zone project. Well, blue zone project. Okay, so they started this project <laughs> in small towns in Iowa and Minnesota. And they work with these small towns to have them buy into living uh, with healthier uh, criteria. Like, right. well, I mentioned being a vegetarian, getting exercise, uh, having a lot of social interaction. Uh, well, anyway, th what they want to do is they want to, well, they, I think the strategy behind this is that if they don't do something to make people have healthier lives, it's going to bankrupt the system when all the baby boomers are that age. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the ways to keep system. people gotcha. healthy and getting people to buy into it, which, which is a good idea. Um, so my organization, Seagull Schools, we went through this process, and locally it's coordinated by HMSA. Oh. Put a lot of money into it and uh, a lot Makes of the sense. public relations. So after we were proved to be a Blue Zone project, they um, were giving us a lot of publicity. I think I was on some morning TV program midweek, and, and they, they bought a spot in Hawaii Business Magazine. Okay, so, get, so I, believe it or not, we're burned a half an hour, and I've got- Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I, did you not? Jeez, can we make it an hour? <coughs> no. <Okay>. We, <laughs> you can, can come, come on back again. We can come on again. We can have a part two. Anyway, we had that this yet. is Chuck Larson, the founder of Seagull Schools. Over how many schools now? Seven? Five. Five schools, 1,000 students, 200 plus employees, fully accredited, and one of the l most affordable in the state of Hawaii, I will add. We have and the best deal. And we it's fully the be best deal. And we fully left them hanging about the Blue Zone story. So you've got, you got to come, come back. back. You've got to come back. Anyway, no guest goes unrewarded. There you go. You get your autographed solo cup, number 103 in the series. Cherish that forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And as we say at the end of every show, one, two, three, how, how are you, you doing? doing?